Hi everyone, welcome to Learning Impact. In today's lecture, we will study about difference between microsociology and macrosociology. Microsociology was studied that the word micro means small or narrow range, as its name indicates. Macro means large or the broader range. It means that microsociology is the sociology which focuses on the narrow range and at the small level. And macrosociology, the sociology which has a broader range and which focuses on the large scale. What does it mean by small and narrow range and large and broader range? We will discuss it later. Okay. What is the definition? The understanding of society at small scale is called microsociology, and the understanding of society at broader range is called macrosociology. The founding father, the founding father of the microsociology was George Gerwitz, who was the first who coined this term microsociology, and he borrowed this term from the term social physics, which was assigned by the August Comte to the sociology. That's why he is known as the father of the microsociology. Macrosociology, the founding father is the Imal Durkheim. Okay, then theoretical framework. Microsociology is it includes mostly the symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism is that we as we humans we first give some sim symbols and then we add some meanings to that symbols according to our own thinking and then we practice that symbols with that meaning so that it become norm of our society. So symbolic interactionism is simply the social interaction at a low level or basically we can say face to face or a two person interaction. So it actually focus on the interaction between individuals. While macrosociology includes structure functionalist approach in which it states that Society is a collection of the social units, different social institutions who are dependent on each other for the proper functioning and conflict perspective that in, in our society there are two classes have and have not. Have class have the control over the means of production which exploit the have not class and leads to the social conflict proposed by the Karl Marx. So this is the theoretical framework of microsociology and macrosociology. Then subject matter. So in microsociology actually focus on the individual interaction. It study that how individual interact within the smaller social unit, it study the individual status, it study the individual social role in society. So this is all the um, subject matter of microsociology is all related to individual, its interaction, its social status, its social role. But in case of the macrosociology, it is has it has a broader range, so it will study the social systems, means social institution, population structure, and it study individual, but in relation to society. It means that how individual is impacted by society and how it impacts society. So it study the individual interaction in relation to society, while microsociology focuses on the individual interaction isolately. So this is the subject matter of the micro and macro sociology. Then there are examples of sociologists. What are the examples of the microsociologists? It includes George Herbert Mead and Herbert Bloomer. George Herbert Mead was a sociologist who gave the theory of I and me, and it was actually focused on the that how how individuals behave in the natural way and how it behave after socialization. Herbert Bloomer was a sociologist who take this theory of the George Herbert Mead and interpret it and analyze it in the symbolic interactionism approach. Macrosociology, macrosociologist examples are Karl Marx, who gave the theory of social conflict, and Imad Durkheim, who is known as the founding father of macrosociology. Then research methodology. Microsociology mostly include the research methodology, which is called the qualitative method. This method focuses on selecting the information-rich information samples from the population. While macrosociology focuses on the quantitative method, which includes survey and other statistical tools. Then analytical approach. As we know that microsociology and macrosociology, they both are the most important branches of sociology. They both analyze society, but the approach of analysis is different. In case of the microsociology, the anal analysis of the social interaction is detailed. Because it is at narrow range, so it is possible for a microsociologist to have a detailed analysis of this of the social interaction at the narrow range. But in case of the macrosociology, as its range is wide, 
So mostly it is not possible for mac macro sociologists to have a detailed analysis. So it mostly gave a broader and more holistic view of society. Then impact on policy. Micro sociology effect it influences the social intervention at a local level because it studies the interaction at a at a small scale and macro sociology impact the policy making at national and global level. Level of generalization. The findings which we get as a result of the micro sociology cannot be easily generalized to the whole society because it has been studied at the local level. For example, if two friends they are interacting, so the way they interact cannot be generalized to the overall interaction uh, to the whole society because it is the interaction within a specific circumstance and at a low level. But in case of the macro sociology, the findings which we get can have a broader implication for society because its its approach is more holistic, more broader. Okay, so this was the level of generalization of micro and macro sociology. Okay, then societal context. For micro sociology, it is it is important to mention the context because context is crucial for understanding interaction two friends who are who ha, uh, who are interacting uh, when they meet in a party so it has a different social context as compared to the interview in which panelist and the interviewer they are interacting so for, to understand the micro sociology or to understand interaction at the low level it is important to have a background the circumstance and the societal context for that interaction but in case of the macro sociology it actually contextualizes the social phenomena within the society social phenomena means that we understand the concept in the way that it impacts society and it is in it is in result impacted by society so macro sociology for example if you study the social institution like found institution so it will study it as a social phenomena that how it affects society and how it is get affected by society throughout the time okay then time scale micro sociology examine the interaction which is short term for example two friends they are interacting or for example in an interview the panelists interview uh, they are they have they are having interaction so it is a short term interaction which will end up uh, which will end after the interview ended but in case of the macro sociology it examines the long term social trends and changes for example that how the family institution has been changed uh, throughout the uh, long period in pakistan for example from in the pakistan society how the family institution has been evolved from the historical if we analyze its historical background so we can analyze that uh, be, as our ancestors have the family system which was the extended family system and now our family institution is nuclear. So for this it is the long term change in our society and also the other social changes like climate change, migration crisis. These are all the social changes which macro sociology study. Then level of complexity. Micro sociology is relatively simple because it deals with a simple smaller social units. In case of the macro sociology, it is relatively complex as I discussed that it, it discusses everything as a social phenomena as it studies everything in relation to society. So that's why it is com relatively complex and interconnected. Transition phase. Micro sociology acts as a transition phase between two, two uh, fields of the social sciences that is social psychology and social anthropology. Social psychology is actually the study that how the individual behavior is influenced by the presence or absence of another individual. Social anthropology actually study the society through a comparative lens. So micro sociology acts as a transition phase between them. Social psychology if anyone is present or absent how individual behavior is affected then come micro sociology face to face interaction and then social anthropology through comparative lenses we analyze society micro sociology is the transition phase between sociology and social anthropology as it is the macro sociology is considered the most important uh, field of the uh, sociology it acts as a transition phase sociology is the study of society social anthropology studies society through comparative lens 
than basis of interpretation. They both interpret society, but microsociology interpretation is more subjective as it is based on more personal belief and thinking and feelings. But in case of the macrosociology, it is objective because it does not focus on the individual belief but focus on the external factors and how it has been affected by the external factors of society. Okay, then microsociology types of questions to be asked or we can say the research questions that what type of the research questions are to be discussed in the microsociology. So it focus on issues, for example, that what type of interaction between couples lead to, lead to divorce. This is the microsociology, the type of question which mostly microsociologists raise or another type of question. For example, how individuals interact within the smaller social unit, how two friends interact for healthy friendship and so on. These type of questions are studied by the microsociology. Microsociology focus, for example, that how does family as an institution contribute to the overall structure of society. Now it is the study of the family institution relation to society. This is the macro sociology. Then example of studies. Microsociology example of study can be for example interaction between teacher and student. It is the simple interaction micro sociology study at a small scale micro sociology for example structure and function of the u.s education institution the micro sociology study only the social only the subunit of the education institution which is teacher and student interaction but micro sociology will study the whole structure and function of the whole institution then uses in everyday life Microsociology is useful in understanding the person relationship in behavior and it also helps us to modify our personal interaction in the society. But in case of the microsociology provide insight into, into societal issues and trends. Then limitations. Microsociology, it is, it is a potential difficulty in generalizing findings to broader context which has been obtained through microsociology because as we discussed, it is the study of the social interaction at a small scale having this specific societal context. So if two friends they are interacting in a party, this finding cannot be generalized to the broader context that every, everywhere two friends meet they interact in the same manner. It cannot be generalized like this because it is it is having the specific circumstance and background. But in case of the macro sociology, limitation is that it may overlook individual analysis and experiences. For example, that it means that when we observe something from the above, it is possible that we neglect something. So it may be possible that it does not give, it, it is unable to give a detailed analysis of the whole institution or the whole uh, structure of society as microsociology give the detailed analysis of the uh, small scale or the narrow range uh, observation. Okay. And then future direction. Future direction means that what is the evolving researches in microsociology and macrosociology. Microsociology uh, evolving researches are there are new forms of communication as it is focusing on communication and there has been now new forms of communication so it could be the future direction for microsociology change in family dynamics impact of technology on social interaction in nowadays age but in case of the macro sociology it could be a global challenges as it is the at macro level uh, climate change migration crisis or digital transformation of society these are the future direction or the evolving researches of the macro sociology okay this was the end of our lecture thank you so much for watching leave your questions in the comment section below and like, share and subscribe our channel for latest lectures. Thank you so much.